certain variables inside your business process. So you have a certain variable and you want to track that variable. Okay? So what we have done up, up until now is that monitoring. I have been showing you events, uh, shapes starting, shapes ending, all this stuff. Now what happens is that I want, for example, to track the purchase order ID. I want to track the total sales amount I'm doing. I want to track all these business matrices. What you can do is that you have something called tracking profile. And I have no other way to show you this except by code up until this moment. So look at this. Here I'm saying I have a shape called assign catalog expired status. This is a shape inside my, my WF process. And what I'm saying is that whenever that's, that shape closes, track for me the variable called the status text. Now status text is a variable defined inside my code. Okay? Now, there's a shape called the process new order. I mean, just to give you the sense, this is the shape. Uh, okay? This is a shape called process a new order. So what I'm saying here is that Whenever that, sh that shape closes, a track for me four variants. Status text, new purchase order, purchase total, and order ID. OK, just, just as easy. Up until this moment, there is no graphical I mean, tool that allows me to specify what are the variables. I have to do this by code. So what will happen now is that before I will clear the database, as usual, and I will run a new instance of my project. So start the project, do the, these same things again. I will copy the catalog ID. OK. Now open the second client, which will wake up my persistent, my unloaded instance, actually. And it will continue. It will, it will be done. So nothing new here. However, what is new now is, and what did the App Fabric engine do for me? It did the tracking for me. How can I be sure of that? Oops. OK, I forget to do some, uh, the basic step, which is, yes, which is, which I, yes. So I will go to the configuration, the App Fabric configuration. Go to the configure. And in the monitoring tab, I have something called the tracking profiles, right? Up until now, it was health, health monitoring and tracking. What I will do is that I will select the sales service order tracking. This is the code that I showed you. So I'm telling now at Fabric that use that tracking profile. I will select the tracking profile, click OK. OK, clear the database. And sorry for that, but I have to run it again. Again, run the second client. Paste my catalog ID. And it's done. OK. Now I will go to the App Fabric dashboard. Nothing new here, I mean, compared to, my, to the previous, uh, compared to the previous business scenario. However, now, when I open my WF process and I go to view track events, what I will see here is something new. You remember what was the name of the shape where I want to do tracking? Process new order. Yes, so it's process new order. So this is my process new order. Oops. OK, the mouse is just killing me. So. This is a process in your order. Now, if I scroll down, you will see a tab here called Track Variants. So if I open the tab, you will see what? You will see the variables I wanted to track. So I wanted to track the purchase total, which is the total amount of the items I'm buying, and it's that, that value. I'm 
I want to track the status text variable and its order received. I'm tracking the order ID. I'm even tracking the new purchase order, which is an XML schema. So every single variable I told App Fabric to track, it was tracked for me at that particular time. So I said, when, when the shape is closed, at that moment, get for me the values for these variables. OK, and it did that for me. So let's see this also, I mean, in a, one new action, which I can search now. I didn't explain yet this upper part, where I can search for that for WF instances. Someone asked, asked me about how to differentiate between instances. I believe you. OK, so that's how. So for example, what I do now is that, you know, get me this order ID. I will copy it and go to the query builder here. And I will select tracked workflow variables. And track for me, the name of the variable is, ah, sorry, I don't have order ID here displayed. I will search for the purchase order. So get for me any instance where the purchase order is 651.96. So go here, display the purchase order, and say, get me this value. OK, run query. It will search, and it will get me that WF instance. OK, so I can even use the tracked variables to search for my queries. To, sorry, to search for my instances. OK, good or not good? Good. Any questions now? Yes? Yes, everything is inside the database. Up until now, you don't have like a KPI report or built-in reports you can use till now. But everything in the database, you can query them. You can build, build your own reports. However, knowing that, and I forgot to, to say that this is a beta product. This is a beta 2 product. And as you know about Microsoft, they, I mean, it starts as beta 2. And the first release, you will find some more, more information, uh, sorry, more features. Uh, one year from now, it will be even better. So this, this is an ongoing project. Good. So that was track. Final topic I want to show you is caching. OK. Now, this is not related 100% to App Fabric. Let's keep it. <laughs> So this is not related 100% to App Fabric. However, I want to ask you, and anyone can tell me, what are the problems today in caching? So for example, in ASP.NET caching, what are your problems? Yes, so that's the ultimate problem, right? You all agree about caching problems? So if you have an ASP.NET application, and you're using caching inside the application, be it the cache, uh, cache class or even session, for example, the issue is that Caching is a memory thing related. It's related to, to memory. So if you have your application load balanced on, on two servers, let's say, cache is stored on one server, but it's not stored on the other. So if your request comes from a load balancer from server one to server two, your cache data, cache data is history, is done. Okay? Now in session state, there is a solution to store the session information inside SQL Server, but that's for session. You do not have a scalable caching solution. Okay? Application level caching, because as you know in ASP.NET, session is user level caching, right? Application level caching, you cannot do it. You cannot store it in, in database, unless you do some customized solution. At the end of the day, anything can be done using customization. But the point is having utilities that makes you save time, OK? So what does this have to do with App Fabric? Maybe at one, one year from now, Microsoft released a project called Velocity. It was called Project Velocity. It was a project separated completely from App Fabric. However, just recently in Beta 2, I believe also in Beta 1, they decided to move that Velocity project and put it inside App Fabric. So now it's, it's a part of App Fabric. Project Velocity is all about distributed caching. So now you can have clusters of caching. So you can have, let's say, two servers. And those servers are dedicated for caching. You create something called cache cluster. And you say, you know what? I want to deploy my cache on three different servers. And I want it to be clustered. It will be redundant on three different servers. With Windows services make, taking care of, I mean, uh, uh, making redundancy between caching, uh, between cache data that you have. And you will have something called cache cluster. So now when you build your application, no more you will store your cache information inside the memory of the application server. 
but you will direct your 